Welcome to The Raise Podcast. I'm Carol Barwick. We're here to raise your confidence and inspire your creativity. Each episode, we will have a different guest who will be discussing our Raise word. The Raise word is a word that will encourage you or empower you and at times inspire you to explore the word a little more for yourself. Well, hello, everybody. My name's Carol Barwick. Welcome to the Raise podcast. This is episode five, and today we're going to be looking at the word creativity. We hope you've enjoyed the podcast so far. We've had the word voice. We've had the word communication and connection. Um, But this week, as I said, we are looking at creativity. And we're going to be speaking about creativity to the brilliant Josie Gamble. Josie has been doing all kinds of things to do with creativity. Um, And what I love about Josie is that she says that creativity is her superpower. Good morning, Josie. Good morning, Carol. Thank you for having me on here. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing good, thank you. Yes, just uh, enjoying the, uh, well, it's not so sunny today, is it? I was hoping to actually get on the bike again this morning, but no, it's uh, it's a bit wet and miserable, but I'm enjoying life. <laughs> yeah, that's good. We can bring our own sunshine to it, can't we? We can indeed, yes. <laughs> okay, so um, I started off by saying that uh, you say that creativity is a superpower, and I know um, that you're thinking of getting some T-shirts done, so please can I be first in line for one of those when they get done? Yeah, we had some done for this stall we did a few years back, um, uh, an exhibition stand, and uh, people said, oh, I can I have a T-shirt? But we, we've never actually produced them. But you saying that, it reminds me, um, I did push some doors uh, uh, not so long ago about getting some done, uh, and then I got a bit waylaid with some other projects I was launching. So um, I need to get back on that because it's. I think uh, it would be a great uh, little spin-off to have some t-shirts that say that creativity is my superpower. You'd be first in line, Carol, don't worry. Thank you. Thank you very much. But it is, isn't it? Creativity is an amazing thing. Um, tell me a bit about what creativity means to you. So um, I've known from a very young age that I I was creative. I just loved anything to do with making, exploring. I guess when I was at school, I, you know, I did all the art subjects. I remember when I chose my GCSEs, I, I chose the designing technology. I chose all the things that were kind of the creative subjects. Um, I then went on to do creative A-levels. Uh, I did, actually, I did maths, physics and art because uh, I was interested in becoming an architect. Um, but I also did a, a, an art GMVQ along the side of that. And then I went to, I did art foundation course at the city of Bath College. I did that for a year where you just get to explore all the creative stuff that you don't necessarily have in the, in the normal kind of a GCSE and A-level curriculum. I then went on to do a, a creative degree. I did industrial product design. So it's it's also called Woods, Metals and Plastics. You're in the studios making things uh, and you can go craft-based or um, pro- sort of industrial based which is more computers and then for the last 14 years I've run my own um, creative business Um, so I would say for me creativity is who I am not what I do so I am creative whatever I do it is done in a creative way Um, whether I get paid for it or not it's it's more of an expression of how I express myself is through creativity and it's a bonus that I can actually do it and get paid for it as well (laughs) Oh, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. I think when you're a true creative, it is you, isn't it? And and ev- everything you do. I mean, I I I find that creativity is great for conflict resolution, for um, trying to work out problems that you, you might have in the house. And there's always going to be some kind of creative solution. But not everybody does see the world in that way. Um, and I, I love right. being able to see it like that you were talking about and um, working with metals and plastics I don't know if you've been watching all that glitters on uh, BBC two where the jewelers um, are kind of making their own jewelry and it's just fascinating watching all the I think no, it's called annealing soldering uh, a totally different world to to where I come from in terms of 
creativity. Oh, um, I remember when I was doing my degree, we could do that. They, they would call that the small metals. So we would be in the small metals workshop with kind of the soldering and hammering. And I loved it. I loved it. I've not really done anything like that since my degree. But just going back to what you're saying about the creative thinking, and um, I've got a fabulous quote from Albert Einstein. He says that I never made one of my discoveries through rational thinking. And I just oh. think creative thinking is quite an overlooked thing. We, we, we can easily look at the more tangible expressions of creativity, but actually I think what sets creative people aside is that they do think differently. They can think outside of the box. It's fabulous if you're in a team of projects or anything to have a creative person on that team who can just question, well, why are we doing it that way? What about yeah. this way? And creative thinking is not very linear. It just, it's kind of more like a, a, a delta, <laughs> I think. It just fans out. And I'm, I'm notorious for not taking no for an answer because I'm, I'm just like, well, if there's a slight, you know, margin of, well, what if we did it this way? I'll always, you know, I'm ever the optimist. I'm well, well, let's try it this way. Let's try it this way. And, and actually that sometimes is what's the difference between something happening and not happening. It's that ability to kind of just keep thinking and believing that there must be a way of solving this problem. To actually, I would say creativity for me, I'm a designer. So I, I solve problems through creativity and that that's my business. That's what I do. I solve the problem of communicating um, a business's, um, you know, what they do to the client that I build yeah. websites and I solve that problem through design. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, I've just been thinking, I don't know if you've ever seen it. There's a wonderful I'd say a children's book, but it shouldn't really be a children's book called Beautiful Oops. And it's about mistakes. And so you, you go to the first page and the first page is ripped and it says, oops. And then you turn the page and you realize that the rip forms the tail of a peacock. That's mm -hmm. got to be creative thinking, hasn't it? That's somebody mm -hmm. that yeah. sees mistakes I'm saying that in inverted commas for all of you listening to the podcast you can't see me but I'm doing this little, little inverted commas um and uh, those mistakes and making something beautiful out of them and I think when it comes to raising confidence and inspiring creativity that is such an important part of it seeing what people feel as mistakes and maybe the shame they've attached to it and that kind of thing and saying yeah how can we how can we spin on that how can we look at that in a different way how can creativity bring us to a more hopeful kind of do you way know what? something that it. it's kind of become a bit of my mantra which I didn't realize I needed to hear but a few years ago the, the phrase failure is part of your success um and the reason I think that spoke to me so much is because I didn't realize, but I was afraid to fail. Um, and, and so I would spend my life trying to avoid failure when actually you have to fail in order to succeed. And it totally transforms the way you see failure because, and actually the creative process is a process of inverted commas failure because um you have to do stuff to and to then move on to the next option the next thing whenever I'm designing for a client you know I have to get that first mind dump of that first idea that I think is amazing I get that out of my head before I then can even contemplate another option which actually always ends up being better than the first so you almost yeah. you have to get over those little hurdles and actually if you can understand that you have to fail in order to succeed, you then you actually look forward to failing. You actually don't avoid it and you just go into it and go, okay, that didn't work. But how, what am I going to, how, what has that shown me that in order to be better coming out of it? So it, it did transform the way I think. And, and I'm not afraid of failure anymore. I embrace it and think, okay, what am I learning through this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll encourage you all to listen right to the end of the podcast today because we always have our final thought from Seb and that is all about what we're talking about today but I didn't realize we were going to go down that road so that's really exciting <laughs> um, <laughs> it's interesting isn't it when you talk about um, failure and what that looks like because I also um, watch the pottery program I can't remember the great throwdown is it great pottery throwdown I watch that with my dad and the sense of anxiety that I get when they do things like fire the pots. So they do all the beautiful 
um, artistic scrolls and, and things on their pots. And then they put them in the kiln and the, they talk about praying to the kiln gods. And every time I think, I can't deal with this. What, what happens if it like breaks? And yet, as a singer songwriter, you throw words out all the time, don't you? That word doesn't make any sense. I'm going to chuck that out. It doesn't matter if that line doesn't match with that line or just move it around. And the fluidity and the like, you know, kind of devil may care attitude of, well, yeah. if that line doesn't work, I'll just find another one. And yet the thought of a pot breaking in the kiln is like, no, please, this one's got to work. Isn't that I guess, interesting? I, I think the creative process is as valuable as the end result and almost yeah. more valuable. So I think, yes, it would be, it's sad if, if that pot breaks, but actually what the, the person has learned through the process of creating it, they will never lose. And that's yeah. the value of creativity. Sometimes, you know, I, I create products for my clients. They want a website and that's the end result. But other people create for themselves. The process is, it's for them. And regardless of what the end result is, they get some um, real benefit from the process whether that be a you know a healing or just enjoyment or relaxing and so there's different uses of that creativity but it's same with you know as you were talking about with your songs same with me with my designs I I design for a client I'm a service and so you know they've asked for a logo I I have to produce several different concepts knowing mm -hmm. that they're going to go oh don't like that don't like that but I like this and can we take this bit from that and it's very much I have to remove myself from that process and not be precious yeah. <laughs> because I might think oh they this one's the bee's knees they're gonna love it and and then they don't even give it a second thought and and I think you that's part of the creative journey you do you do have to kind of if if it's for a service you're doing it for someone else there is that element of you know regardless of what they think I love making it and just the blank page the creating something from nothing taking their brief and reinterpreting it for them so that they can go wow and and then they get that feedback of like oh, it's like Christmas, looking at all these designs and they get to choose one. And, and you know, it, it it's part of the journey. But I would say, actually, I'm more and more valuing the the journey of the creativity more than the end product. And I think that's important because if you were to um, cling to one of the designs you'd particularly done and say to the client, no, no, this is this is really the best one for you, even if even if it isn't the best one for them, um, that's detrimental, isn't it? And so we have to be, have to be um, aware of that and try not to get too precious. I just wanted to go back to what you said about um, healing, because um, I think you know that I, I really believe that there's a lot of healing in them, um, creativity and just linking it with the broken jars, that amazing um, Japanese art of Kintsugu, I think it is. Yeah, um, Yes. And I, I've always loved that. Um, and again, that feeling of taking broken things and making something beautiful from them and that, you know, going with that process and not saying it's broken, we bin it, but it's broken, we'll not even repair it sometimes, we'll recreate it, we'll, we'll remould it. And um, you have worked with hundreds of different creatives where are there are there particular points where you see that um there is a healing that kind of works through the creativity um so i guess um it's i create for my work um and so it's my job um but there are lots of things i do for myself that are creative that i just do that I don't require being paid for. And I just do it because I love it. So I guess I can only really talk from my own experience. Um, uh, uh, I, I volunteer my time every year. So my the church that I belong to runs this huge mums uh, or parents and carers stay and play group. And they have like 300 uh, people on a Friday every week, not during wow. lockdown, but um, and it, it's fabulous. And then one year they were like, "Oh, we should do something at Christmas. Let's have a, you know, a little Father Christmas in a grotto." And and I heard that they were doing. It. I said, "Oh, can I help?" And then this was like eight years ago, and it's gone a little bit epic since then. And we spend a whole week setting it up, and then they open it up to the public and sell tickets the next day. And and wow. and the runs it. 
uh, she says, oh, Josie, I just don't know where you get all these ideas from. And, and, and it's, everyone loves it. And, you know, people come in and they cry when they walk into this grotto. I mean, <laughs> they literally, wow. that people have put so much effort into it. And I always yeah. say to Ursula, who runs it, I say, do you know what? Even if nobody came, I would still do it, genuinely. Even if not one person went into that grotto, just because... I love it. I love doing it. I get so much from it. I love Christmas and I love being creative and I love just being given the freedom to just transform this whole building into this like wonderland. Um, and it's, it's a whole kind of journey now. But so for me, I do it because I genuinely just love it. But then equally people walking in and crying when they see it, it speaks yeah. to me of, wow, that's, that's speaking to them as well. And it's not particularly profound. It's, it's a Christmas grotto. It's Christmas. Um, we have inflatable nutcrackers and all sorts, you, um, you know, <laughs> but, and, and there's no other message other than we just want to create this wonderful experience for you. Um, and so I, I guess that for me, it, I don't know whether I, you know, say what I'm being healed from or anything, but I just know it, it does something for my soul just to be able to do that and see the reaction of other people as well. I love that. I love that. Um, so for those people listening, just have a little think about what, what creative thing you love doing and feel free to kind of get in touch with us. You can email us or get in touch on our social media and tell us what kind of creativity um, really gets you going. Um, this is uh, really exciting. I I'm loving talking about this. How cool is it to hear from Josie and to be able to discuss all things creativity? I wonder what your zone of creativity is. What is it that raises your confidence and inspires you? If you're loving the podcast as much as we are, please share it with somebody else. You could even leave us a review. Back to Josie. So if you were to um, have some kind of creative uh, power that you don't have at the moment, what do you think you'd have, Josie? <laughs> Well, I would say probably more about the, the tool. Um, so I think I've got a lot of creative experience, but sometimes I'm frustrated by maybe, you know, I'd love to do video and video editing. I just mm. find video fascinating. I think it's a wonderful tool for communication, but I've never really sat and learned how to do that. Um um so but that that would be the the one thing if I was to to learn a new kind of tool to help express my creativity it would be videography and video editing because I just think it's so powerful as a means of communication yeah but going back to what you were just saying about Christmas I have seen your epic um it's not slow motion is it it's the other one oh time lapse <laughs> time lapse Christmas trees Oh my goodness, they are amazing. So you, it's it's not that you haven't got any skills in videography, far from it. But uh, anybody that that knows Josie or, or lives around about her will know that her Christmas tree goes up pretty early, doesn't it? Yeah. And it, it's there are some epic yeah, well, there's videos. There's five main roads in Wolverhampton that come off the main central ring road, and we live on one of those. And we live by a set of traffic lights, so people sit outside our house when they're waiting by these traffic lights, and. Um, we do put our tree up quite early and um, we, I was surprised to know that we are known as the Christmas tree house. Um, and I learned this from my, um, my uh, mechanic when, when our car went in for a service <laughs> and the mechanic said to my husband said, just, right, I'll, I'll mend your car, but just make sure your wife doesn't put that Christmas tree up too early. <laughs> wow. Because, yeah, I do like Christmas. And um, as I say, I, I, everything I do, I, it, it just creative. So I do these random Christmas tree time lapses of us putting them up. We even do a time lapse of our Christmas dinner. We got like 7,000 views one Christmas. Just I literally just time lapse us all eating our Christmas dinner. It's, it's become a bit of a tradition. So <laughs> it's just fun. Um, oh, my word. So those of you on social media, you better start following Josie just so you can see her time lapse Christmas <laughs> activities. My goodness me. That sounds amazing. Um, I mentioned earlier on that you work with lots and lots of different creative people. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that work? 
Yeah, so I kind of wear two hats. I, I run my own business, um, Gamble Designs or Josie Gamble Designs. I'm just rebranding. So um, I've done that for the last 14 years, uh, a freelance um, sole trader um, building websites and graphic design. But the other hat I wear is I launched and run Christian Creative Network and Christian Creative Directory. So Christian Creative Network works, uh, they both aim to kind of champion creativity in the church. Um, and the network does that through a national network made up of local branches where we gather um, it together, local Christian creatives to champion, encourage and support one another. So there has a, a monthly meet workshops and events that all support and encourage these creative individuals during lockdown we, we've had to do it over zoom um and then last week we launched the christian creative directory which is uh the number one place to find christian creative professionals and services so it, it's very much geared to um just again championing that creativity and, and i guess the niches within the church um in the uk and so that has over the years i've kind of uh, networked and connected with as you say hundreds of creatives and and I guess we with they all of us have this longing to connect with like-minded people um, whether that's in business or in hobbies or just people that um, understand us and our journey and and that's what I've tried to create with the Christian Creative Network and enabled um, people to meet with other like-minded people and, and I guess what I've discovered is that regardless of your creative expression you could be a, a singer songwriter or you could be a sculptor or you could be an architect and you could be a, a, a photographer very different expressions but the creative journey we all go on is very very similar um you know doubts fears imposter syndrome how do you price your work if you are selling it um valuing your own work and time and and all of those things that if you're isolated and on your own it's very hard to kind of get out of your own head and it, it you don't get the answers you need but when you come alongside other people you hear their stories you hear their journey and you yeah. realize oh you feel that as well that's actually mm -hmm. quite reassuring and and actually there is no one answer to how you price your work but there are lots and lots of different approaches and, and tactics and um, just hearing other people. It really does encourage and support you. So that that's what I've done and given my, my life to over the last sort of five years. Um, and it's, it's, I've loved it. I've grown and been encouraged through it. So I, I hope it helps others too. Yeah. I've definitely seen how much um, you've grown over the last few years, just in, in, talking about this idea that you wanted to do and now here it is um and uh, that's really exciting that's another thing that needs to go on my to-do list and um, to join the the directory but um yeah it's just giving um cre christian creatives an, an opportunity to really um make their creativity a thing isn't it because i think a lot of people are creative in one way or another but they don't realize that actually there can be so much value in that and sharing it. And then you get the opposite side of it where people think, well, uh, you know, I, I'm just going to draw this picture and give it to somebody. And they don't realize that it's okay to say, well, actually there's going to be a cost to it. My time is going to be, um, you know, there's going to be a cost to my time and, and that's okay too. And as you said, being able to discuss it with like-minded people kind of takes away some of that fear or confusion around well is it okay to charge for this thing that seemingly I do so naturally for so many creatives um so I think that's a fantastic thing that you're doing and um you can find out more about that in the show notes we'll we'll pop all of Josie's links in the show notes um yeah. well, at the I end just, uh, <clears throat> oh, excuse me a little frog in my throat a little <laughs> a little um promo in, in that we've launched the directory but um because it's we've got a special launch offer that if you yeah. sign up before the 21st of may using the code ccd launch six you get a uh, six months free um so that is a way of just really uh hopefully supporting creatives and getting them onto the directory once you're on the directory you get access to uh, jobs and opportunities that are posted um, and you can also get, there's loads of tips and articles that are written by um, experts in their fields, just really pouring into the Christian creative community to help them grow and um, get better at what they do. Okay, plug over. 
<laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you. Can you just say that code again? For sure. Me? CCD launch six. Great. So we'll pop that in the show notes um, as well, along with your website and your social media and things like that. It was nice to be able to talk about different aspects of creativity. I think that's really important. I think some people just think creativity is drawing. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I think it's, yeah. uh, it's good. I was, I was talking on the, um, so they do this, the Church of England do this thing called um, act, is it act, Activate or Accelerate. It's like the youth evangelism training um course that they do and then they they can when they're on the course they can choose different streams and and the people who choose the art stream um this year and last year my husband and I well actually my husband wasn't there this year we we talked to them so um one of the things so that I did that last week it was, we're just doing it over zoom at the minute because of um lockdown yeah but um what I was able to show them on the website for the directory is the drop down menu which has got all the different forms of creativity wow. and one of the young people just said wow I just didn't know there was so much because yeah, you know when yeah. you're in school it is just painting and drawing but actually it leads on to so many different things and I think that's quite as a young person it's quite mind expanding to realize oh there's a lot you can do and it's not just um you know there's loads of careers in it and and I just it was just quite nice you don't realize oh yeah and it's very exciting to be a creative uh, and it's an exciting time to be a creative so yeah yeah I think it's I don't think people realize the importance of creativity at all I'm I'm always kind of trying to champion it getting into schools and people don't realize that you can write a a rap with a young person that can't communicate with teachers and things like that but they can write a rap about it they can write it in five minutes and um and it'll tell you everything you need to know yeah I think I watched this um this video a few few weeks ago and it was, it was this the guy who he's the founder and director of patron which is um this platform where you can yeah. as a creative be get people to sponsor you yeah and um uh, I mean, the video, it was kind of a soft sell marketing video, but it basically gave a global perspective on creativity. And he talked about how the world globally is going through a second renaissance of creativity at the minute. And yeah. he gave all these examples of all these massive tech companies who are investing in it and, and opportunities that are available. And he just said, you know, it's this amazing time to be a creative right now. Um, yeah. In terms of the church, I've been saying for years and other people have that we're in a renaissance of creativity. So it's just quite exciting that there is this value and focus kind of being given, restored back to creativity, even yeah. though it was not an essential job during yeah, lockdown. Yeah. Um, oh, no. that, yeah. <laughs> That's it a does it great on me. I'm like, how can you say creativity is not essential? <laughs> I know. But- it has been fantastic uh, to talk to you this morning. We now get to the bit, which is the truly creative bit, where I um, write a little um, verse for you, Josie. So Ooh. I have to just take a little breath um, and just give me one minute while the creative juices start flowing or not. <laughs> okay. Whether it's pottery video, art, whether you sing or you write, whether creation is solutions to problems, you'll find an art just for you. Creativity is not just one thing. It can be mistakes or ideas but creativity is important to all and it can bring hope to our fears. There you go. Oh, that is wonderful. It, it, it didn't rhyme, did it? Not, not the first bit. We'll just have to ignore that bit. Oh, it, <laughs> it ended up all right. I like to see it as a pot in a kiln and, you know, the handle fell off, but we'll paint it beautifully and it all looks okay in the end. <laughs> That's amazing. You'll have to write that down for me so that I can um, uh, pin it on my wall and be inspired by it. I, I, I will do. I might, I might adjust it slightly because I'm not happy that it didn't write. Once a creative, always a creative, Josie, what can I say? 
it yeah. has been fantastic talking to you this morning thank you so much for sharing um and discussing with me all about creativity so uh if you are listening have a think about what your creative superpower might be and get in touch with um me at race or get in touch with Josie um, and tell us what you think um, and enjoy being creative. Thank you so much, Josie. It's been fantastic speaking to you this morning. Thank you for having me. A final thought from Seb. Learning is all about making mistakes. Thank you for listening to the Raise podcast. We hope you feel raised and inspired by this episode. Whilst we're not offering face-to-face classes currently, we are doing online singing lessons where you can have your voice raised as well as your confidence. If you would like to find out more, please visit our website at www.raiseforall.com or find us on social media on either our Facebook or Instagram page. Take care.